All right, let's take a look at to a skylark. Now, interesting thing about the skylark is a bird that lives in Europe, can be found in England, is that it flies very, very high, very, very high in the sky, and it sings in flight. And because it flies so high, it cannot be seen. But yet, you know it's there because it can be heard. And this, this for Shelley takes on something that's, that's really significant, really important to think about, and it becomes a way for Shelley to explore the difference between the ideal and the real. In a way to think about and understand this, this difference that Shelley should be working with would be to think about, say for example, a home improvement project, right? Whether it could be making um, a, a birdhouse or a doghouse, something simple like that, or redoing a room in your house where you're gonna repaint, maybe put some wallpaper up and some new furnishings, right? So when you're picturing this project, whether it's that you know, birdhouse, that doghouse, or redoing that room in your home, when you're picturing it right you can you can see that mental image and it starts to form and it looks really good wow cool I can see it and then you sketch out not sketch out some plans or go online and look at some different colors and then it starts right and then you go out and then you build that doghouse or you repaint that room or put new wallpaper up and then what happens is that right you look at it and you go oh you know, when I was thinking about it, it looked better. It looked perfect. But now that it's done, it's not really bad, but it's not like it was before when it was just an idea, right? So looking at the difference here between the ideal and the real. And for Shelley, right, this is better than this. Why? Well, it's not just because that these are the things that are unseen and these are the things that are seen, right? When we have an ideal form, we're in this, we're not part of the, the real world, it's pure. There's no flaws, right? Up here, there's no disease, there's no pain and suffering. All of this happens here. So Shelley is working with and exploring this. Now, how does To a Skylark begin? Hail to thee, blithe what? Here we go again. Spirit. Didn't we have this before? Boom. Boom, right? This elevation we keep seeing here with these romantic poets, nature picking up, assuming sources of divinity. Bird, bird thou never wert. In other words, you're not a bird. You're a spirit that from heaven or near it pourest thy full heart in profuse strains of unpremeditated art. What type of art? Unpremeditated, spontaneous. There we go again. Higher still and higher from the earth thou springest like a cloud of fire, the deep blue thou wingest, and singing still doth soar, and soaring ever singest. In the golden lightning of the sink, sunken sun, o'er which clouds are brightening, thou dost float and run like an unbodied joy whose race is just begun. So in describing, right, the bird that he can't see, but just hear the song of that bird, right? What is it like? It's like all these things. It's heavenly, right? It's the golden lightning from the sun, unbodied joy. The, right, the joy is not in a body. It's unbodied. Oh. The pale purple even melts around thy flight like a star of heaven in the broad daylight. Thou art unseen, but yet I hear thy shrill delight. Now this is this is something really really cool. 
when you go outside at night, right, and look up, you can see the stars. When you go outside during the daytime and look up, the stars are still there, but they're being outshone by our star, the sun. Boom, there it is. Did y'all get that? That's, that's just a really cool, that's really cool. Oh, now, now what Shelly's gonna continue to do is he's gonna start to play with these, these different images, these different examples of ideal real, unseen, but yet we know they're still there, right? So let's jump ahead, jump ahead a little bit. Um, what thou art, we know not, right? We don't know what this spirit is. What is most like thee? Hmm. So in other words, what is most like this spirit? From rainbow clouds there flow not drops so bright to see, as from thy presence showers a rain of melody. Like a poet, what? Hidden. In the light of thought, singing hymns unbidden, till the world is wrought to sympathy with hopes and fears it heeded not. Notice that? Poet hidden. Like a high-born maiden in a palace tower, soothing her love-laden soul in secret hour, with music sweet as love, which overflows her bower. How do we know that the maiden is in the palace tower? We hear, but not see. Mm. Like a glowworm golden in a dell of dew, scattering unbeholden its aerial hue among the flowers and grass which screen it from the view. So this is an example of, there's some insects that are phosphorescent, in other words, at night they have their, their, they're able to illuminate themselves from the, the foods that, that, that they eat. And you're able to see the, the glow worm. You're not able to, to see the glow worm, but you're able to see the luminescence there on the forest floor. And that's how we're able to know where it is. We can't, can't see it itself, but just the, the glow around it. Like a rose embowered in its own green leaves, by warm winds to flower till the scent it gives makes faint with too much sweet those heavy winged thieves right so this not the not the rose but the smell wow so as we we'll, we'll come back and we'll finish up this poem and we'll continue to see this interplay here that Shelley is giving us between the ideal and the real into a skylark continuing here the spirit.